Apollo 9, Wikipedia article audio Apollo 9 was the third manned mission in the United States Apollo space program and the first flight of the command-slash-service module with the lunar module. Its three-person crew, consisting of Commander James McDivitt, Command Module Pilot David Scott, and Lunar Module Pilot Rusty Schwickhart, spent ten days in low Earth orbit testing several aspects critical to landing on the Moon, including the LM engines, backpack life support systems, navigation systems, and docking maneuvers. The mission was the second manned launch of a Saturn V rocket. After launching on March 3, 1969, the crewmen performed the first manned flight of a LM, the first docking and extraction of a LM, two spacewalks, and the second docking of two manned spacecraft two months after the Soviets performed a spacewalk crew transfer between Soyuz 4 and Soyuz 5. The mission proved the LM worthy of manned spaceflight. Further tests on the Apollo 10 mission would prepare the LM for its ultimate goal, landing on the Moon. They returned to Earth on March 13, 1969. Crew Backup Crew Asterisk Williams was killed in October 1967 when the T-38 he was flying crashed near Tallahassee, and was replaced with Alan L. Bean. The support crew for Apollo 9 consisted of In April 1966, McDivitt, Scott, and Schwickhart were selected by Deke Slayton as the second Apollo crew, as backup to Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee for the first manned Earth orbital test flight of the Block I Command-Service Module, designated as 204 expected to fly in late 1966. This was to be followed by a second Block I flight, as 205, to be crewed by Wally Skira, Don Isolat, and Walter Cunningham. The third manned mission, designated as 207-208, was planned to fly the Block II command module and the lunar module in Earth orbit, launched on separate Saturn IBS, with the crew to be named. However, Delays in the Block ICSM development pushed as 204 into 1967. By December 1966, the original AS-205 mission was cancelled, Skira's crew was named as Grissom's backup, and McDivitt's crew was promoted to prime crew for the LM test mission, redesignated as 205-208. On January 26, 1967, they were training for this flight, expected to occur in late 1967, in the first Block II Command Module 101 at the North American plant in Downey, California. The next day, Grissom's crew were conducting a launch pad test for their planned February 21st mission, which they named Apollo 1, when a fire broke out in the cabin killing all three men and putting an 18-month hold on the manned program while the Block II command module and A7L pressure suit were redesigned for safety. As it turned out, a 1967 launch of AS-205-208 would have been impossible even absent the Apollo 1 accident, as problems with the LM delayed its first unmanned test flight until January 1968. NASA was able to use the 18-month hiatus to catch up with development and unmanned testing of the LM and the Saturn V launch vehicle. Support Crew By October 1967, planning for manned flights resumed, with Apollo 7 being the first Earth orbit CSM flight in October 1968 given to Skira's crew and McDivitt's mission following as Apollo 8 in December 1968, using a single Saturn V instead of the two Saturn IBS. This would be followed by a higher Earth orbit flight, to be crewed by Frank Borman, Michael Collins, and William Anderson early 1969. 
However, LM problems again prevented it from being ready for the D mission by December, so NASA officials created another mission for Apollo 8 using the Saturn V to launch only the CSM on the first manned flight to orbit the Moon, and the E mission was cancelled as unnecessary. Slayton asked McDivitt and Borman which mission they preferred to fly, McDivitt wanted to fly the LM, while Borman volunteered for the pioneering lunar flight. Therefore, Slayton swapped the crews, and McDivitt's crew flew Apollo 9. Flight Directors The crew swap also affected who would be the first crew to land on the moon, when the crews for Apollo 8 and 9 were swapped. Their backup crews were also swapped. Since the rule of thumb was for backup crews to fly as prime crew three missions later, this put Neil Armstrong's crew in position for the first landing mission Apollo 11 instead of Pete Conrad's crew, who made the second landing on Apollo 12. Apollo 9 was the first space test of the complete Apollo spacecraft including the third critical piece of Apollo hardware besides the command-slash-service module and the Saturn V launch vehicle the lunar module. It was also the first space docking of two vehicles with an internal crew transfer between them. For ten days, the astronauts put both Apollo spacecraft through their paces in Earth orbit, including an undocking and redocking of the lunar lander with the command vehicle just as the landing mission crew would perform in lunar orbit. Apollo 9 gave proof that the Apollo spacecraft were up to this critical task, on which the lives of lunar landing crews would depend. For this and all subsequent Apollo flights, the crews were allowed to name their own spacecraft. The Gangly LM was named Spider and the CSM was labeled Gumdrop because of the command module shape, and because of the blue wrapping in which the craft arrived at Kennedy Space Center. These names were required as radio call signs when the vehicles flew independently. Mission Parameters Schwickhart and Scott performed an EVA Schwickhart checked out the new Apollo space suit the first to have its own life support system rather than being dependent on an umbilical connection to the spacecraft, while Scott filmed him from the command module hatch. Schwickhart was due to carry out a more extensive set of activities to test the suit, and demonstrate that it was possible for astronauts to perform an EVA from the lunar module to the command module in an emergency but as he had been suffering from space sickness the extra tests were scratched. LM, CSM Docking McDivitt and Schwickhart later test flew the LM, and practiced separation and docking maneuvers in Earth orbit. They flew the LM up to 111 miles from Gumdrop, using the engine on the descent stage to propel them originally, before jettisoning it and using the ascent stage to return. This test flight represented the first flight of a manned spacecraft that was not equipped to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. EVA The splashdown point was 23 degrees 15 minutes north, 67 degrees 56 minutes west, 160 nautical miles east of the Bahamas and within sight of the recovery ship USS Guadalcanal. Apollo 9 was the last spacecraft to splash down in the Atlantic Ocean. The command module was displayed at the Michigan Space and Science Center, Jackson, Michigan, until April 2004 when the center closed. In May 2004, it was moved to the San Diego Aerospace Museum. The LM ascent stage orbit decayed on October 23, 1981, the LM descent stage orbit decayed March 22, 1969. The SIVB stage J2 engine was restarted after lunar module extraction and propelled the stage into solar orbit by burning to depletion. Mission Background 
the Saturn IVB third stage became a derelict object where it would continue to orbit the Sun for many years. As of November 2014, it remains in orbit. The circular patch shows a drawing of a Saturn V rocket with the letters USA on it. To its right, an Apollo CSM is shown next to an LM, with the CSM's nose pointed at the front door of the LM rather than at its top docking port. The CSM is trailing rocket fire in a circle. The crew's names are along the top edge of the circle, with Apollo 9 at the bottom. The D in McDivitt's name is filled with red to mark that this was the D mission in the alphabetic sequence of Apollo missions. The patch was designed by Alan Stevens of Rockwell International. The lunar module awaits extraction from Apollo 9's SIVB stage. David Scott stands in the opened command module hatch. Rusty Schwickart stands on the porch of Spider during his extravehicular activity on the fourth day of the mission. Mission Highlights Apollo 9 LM Spider Mission Insignia LM Spider over Ocean Stuart A. Rusa, Fred W. Hayes, Jr., Jack R. Luzma, Edgar D. Mitchell Alfred M. Worden. The LM Spider ascent stage on the fifth day of the mission. The Apollo 9 command module gumdrop is on display at the San Diego Air and Space Museum, San Diego, California. Its service module was jettisoned shortly after the deorbit burn and re entered the atmosphere. Apollo 9 press kit, NASA. Release No. 69-29, February 23, 1969, Table 2-37 Apollo 9 Characteristics from NASA Historical Data Book, Volume 3, Programs and Projects 1969-1978 by Linda Newman Ezel, NASA History Series, NASA SP 4012, Appendix 6 Crews and Support for Manned Apollo Flights The Apollo Spacecraft, A Chronology Volume 4 NASA 1978 OCLC 23818 NASA SP 4009 Archived from the original on February 5, 2008 Retrieved January 29, 2008, Apollo 9 Flight Plan as 504-CSM104-LM3 Final Report by J.V. Rivers, NASA, February 1969, The Apollo Spacecraft, A Chronology NASA, NASA SP-4009, Apollo Program Summary Report, NASA, JSC 09423, April 1975 The ascent stage of LM-3 Spider re-entered on October 23, 1981 Summary of Maneuvers Pictures Spacecraft Location The descent stage of LM-3 Spider re-entered on March 22, 1969 Apollo 9, 3 to make ready official NASA documentary film, Apollo 9 16mm onboard film part 1, part 2 raw footage taken from Apollo 9, Apollo 9, the space duet of Spider and Gumdrop official NASA documentary film, OCLC 7682161, Apollo 9 images at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Apollo launch and mission videos at ApolloTV.net The upper stage of the Apollo 9 Saturn V, SIVB-504N, remains in heliocentric orbit as of 2014. This article incorporates public domain material from websites or documents of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.
NASA reports. Multimedia. Bibliography.